Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Psychic Pizza Deliverers Go to the Ghost Town. Uh, this is a five player game. It plays one player plus up to four. One is the game master, and the other four players are the Psychic Pizza Deliverers. Uh, it is by BoardGameTables.com and uh, plays roughly about, I don't know, about 45 minutes? It's pretty quick. I guess more players equals more time. And in the game, you are a what? Delivering pizza. You're a psychic delivering pizza. <laughs> Do you know why you're a psychic? You can defeat the ghosts. Mm -hmm. And psychics defeat ghosts. And you'll be basically on your turn, you're going to either move or play a card or try and eliminate a ghost. You're trying to find a... Pizza. And then you're trying to... Deliver it. Yes, to one of the random houses. But you have zero information. Your board is basically completely blank when the game starts, other than where your character begins. And you basically are just going to be using this as a reference, as you tell the game master in what direction you want to go and what you want to do. Find the pizza, get to the house, deliver the pizza, and you win the game. It's a pretty simple, straightforward concept with a unique little twist that kind of reminds me of that old school game that I played on PC that I had to introduce Alicia to called Minesweep. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to take you through the game, how it's basically set up, how you play, and then of course what we thought about the game. Psychic Pizza Deliverers Go to the Ghost Town. That's right. To set up the game, and we're just going to call it Psychic Pizza, just for short, to set up the game, Psychic Pizza, basically the player who's playing as the DM, Dungeon Master, Game Master, is going to draw one of the different deliverer cards. Now, depending on how many deliverers that are playing in the game is the card you will draw. So, for instance, if it's just me and Alicia playing with Callie, and Callie's the Game Master, she will choose a two-deliverer card. Uh, if she wants, she can also do the challenge mode cards as well to make it a little more interesting, a little more challenging. And if you're playing with more, or maybe let's say you're playing with four deliverers, you could choose one of these guys here. Uh, and in which case, that is exactly what has happened. Uh, Callie chose this card here, and then she's going to set up the board. Now, her board is actually the bottom of the box, which is really quite unique, and it's probably hard to see here. But I'll try and give you a little bit of a close-up here. And you're going to be setting up the box with where the players are going to start in retrospect for oh the board. No. It happens. <laughs> where, where the players start uh, is going to start where all the ghosts are going to be placed on the game board, where the pizzas are going to be, and then where the houses are eventually going to be. Because not everything is going to exactly start on the board. In fact, you're only going to have pizzas, ghosts, and fences, and then things are going to slowly start popping up. And of course, there's these teleportation pads. And... Uh, you're going to be utilizing this as a reference, as a game master, to move people around the board. So yes, go ahead and take out one of the cards, and make a 7x7 seven seven grid exactly as it is defined here, with the people, the ghosts, the pizzas, and locations that are going to show up in the game. You could also, if you want, add additional variants to the game, like the little animals on the loose variant, where you can add them anywhere you want on the board, and you'll be making pig and cat noises throughout the game. You'll take the deck of cards, this is like the psychic pizza cards, so basically whenever you defeat a ghost as a deliverer, you'll draw one of these guys here and in place of an action you can play one of these guys set aside extra ghosts any extra markers you're not utilizing and all the additional houses that you will be utilizing inside the box as the secret game master on the opposite end of the game master box it'll also show you where to set the game up or how to play the game and what you're going to say when people move and you can place that literally right inside the box so that you can utilize that without people seeing anything as for the other players, they're going to take a marker, they're going to take their guy and place it where the guy location is, and then they're basically ready to go. It's a pretty quick and simple setup for anybody who isn't the game master. There are three different actions you can do as the pizza deliverer. You can defeat a ghost, you can play a card, or you can move. So what do you do when you try to defeat a ghost? What's the objective? Uh, what's, the, what's the play method? So if you know there's a ghost to your south, you'll say, I'm going to attack to my south. And then if there is a ghost there, you'll defeat the ghost and you'll get a card from that. Yeah, and the, the DM or Game Master will give you one. So you can actually write on your board here, and if your character is, let's just say, here right in the middle, and you're going to assume there's a ghost down there, you can say, for my action this turn, I want to defeat the ghost down below me. In which case, the DM will go, oh, boo, you, you or not boo, but oh, you got the ghost. In which case, you'll defeat it, but you're not going to move there. You're just going to defeat it, and the DM is going to reward you with one of these cards here. And they have a bunch of different things that they can do, um, but one of your other actions is to play a card, and how does that work? 
You just play the card for your turn and you do what it says. Exactly. So this one here is line sprint. It says specify an orthogonal direction, northeast, south, or west, and you will move as far as possible in that direction until you hit a fence. The mayor will announce how many spaces that you moved. And so you can use these cards to move or get information based on the directions uh, of your pizza and or of the house that you're trying to deliver on. So these kind of have unique little bonuses and you can get them just for each ghost that you defeat. And you can always choose to play them as an action as opposed to moving or trying to defeat a ghost that is next to you. And then the last action is, is to move, which is pretty simple as well. What do you do? You just move one space. And where can you move? Can you go anywhere you want? Um, well, yes, unless you hit a ghost, then you'll stay in that place, or if you hit a fence. Yes. Additionally, you cannot move diagonally either. You can only move north, south, east, or west. And how that will work is pretty simple. So you have your character starting on your little board here, and you're going to say, ooh, I want to go ahead and go north. I have no idea what's around me, so north is where I'm going to go. When you move north, the DM or the game master is going to also move your character north on his or her board. And then they're going to follow the steps on the back of this box, which is why you have it in the setup. First, you'll see if they moved. Then if they did, you'll tell them if there's any adjacent fences, north, south, east, or west. You'll say there's a fence to your left or to your right or a south or east or whatever. And they can then mark that on their board. And how fences cover an entire space in the 7x7 seven seven grid. Then you're going to tell them about the eight surrounding spaces, including diagonals, like what is around them. And it's going to be kind of vague. You'll say how many ghosts are in those eight spaces, how many pizzas, and how many homes, if there are any homes. And remember that homes do not show up until somebody gets a pizza. Uh, once you've told the player all that information, they'll go ahead and mark it on their grid. And actually, if you would, if you look, see on the far uh, left-hand side, there's going to be the things that you can write down, like ghosts and pizzas and houses. You can write those down on the board here, what fences look like, how movement works. You can use this basically as your board to do whatever you want. You can start anywhere you want. It doesn't matter as long as you're kind of giving yourself some direction and orientation. Um, and it was right down in the corners of the little squares, your houses, uh, the pizzas, and uh, the ghosts for the game. And after you're done with that, you're, you're going to pass, and the next player is going to get a chance to go. And they'll play a card, they will move, or they are going to defeat a ghost. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Once a player does what? What do they do? Get First, a pizza. Yeah, they get a pizza. Then what's going to happen? It reveals a house. Yes, and then you have to go and travel to that house. And there's multiple different colored houses. And you have to go to the house with the pizza's color that you're trying to deliver it to. So if you get an orange pizza, you'll need to find the orange house. So going to a house doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. But if you go to the right house, it does. Sadly, though, what's also a little unique twist to the game is when a house spawns, what also spawns? Ghosts? Yes, and they spawn all around the space of the house as long as there's no other previous marker in that location. So ghosts are going to start popping up throughout the game when the pizzas are found by the pizza deliverers. Yep, once the player gets to that house, to the pizza to the house, the game is over and you win the psychic pizza game. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and review the game. What category do you want to start with? Let's start with gameplay. Gameplay. Okay, so in Psychic Pizza Delivers, go to the ghost town. The main thing you're doing is <laughs> moving, right? So it's kind of a guess and check. Mm -hmm. You're moving, you're getting information from the DM, and you're trying the best you can to utilize that information um, based on where you've previously been and where you're going. And I think the most interesting thing about the game is the teleporters. Yeah. Those guys are going to make you move random to random locations on the 7x7 seven seven grid, and it'll make you actually kind of make your character go somewhere else on your grid. And you'll have to try and correspond the location you're at now compared to the location you used to be at. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that was pretty much the most interesting aspect of yeah. gameplay. I think early game, the teleporter didn't matter so much, but if you're like almost gonna get to the house like I did, it's almost worth it to keep teleporting until you're back to that first location. And so how teleporters work is interesting. There's three different kinds. You have a triangle, square, and a circle. And the circle goes to the square or whatever, um, and then the square goes to the triangle, and the triangle goes to the circle. So you're never going back and forth. You're gonna be going in kind of a three-prong mm -hmm. teleportation. So you can't just go back and be in the place you want to be, you're actually going to maybe transport to a new location. And with that comes learning about where other people are. So in the little Animals Gone Wild expansion, uh, there's little oinks and like meows that the Game Master will use to kind of give you information about where you are compared to other players. Because you can walk on other players' space and not know it. Um, and then 
you know, the teleporters is the same thing. If you start going through a teleporter and going around spaces and you start noticing, oh, this space has a lot of ghosts around it. It's very likely that I teleported to Michael's space where he's also at where there's lots of ghosts around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, trying to just kind of, your our objective is mainly to like create the board, create the seven by seven grid, figure out where you are in relation to it, where everybody else is. And if they're near a house and you know where they are, then you know that the house that you want to go to might be near them. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of utilize that. Mm -hmm. I really like this. I thought this was really cool. It had that yeah. mind sweeper feel to it where you're trying to destroy the spaces, find out where the mines are. But in this case, you're finding the pizzas, avoiding the ghosts or defeating them to get cards, which mm -hmm. are amazing. And uh, trying to deliver the pizza. It's, it's pretty straightforward as to how the, the game goes. Yeah. comments on it yeah i actually really like the ghosts i like that they can't like kill you <laughs> they'll just maybe like delay your movement kind of like but... lose a turn but you gain information so you're not losing yeah. out on any like too bad yeah and you can get a card from them if you defeat them so i think they're pretty helpful actually and if there's a bunch of ghosts around you it's likely you're right next to a house too so that gives you information as well so you have like an anti-ghost barrier. I didn't see this one before. Not an action. If moving into a space with a ghost, remove the ghost and finish your move, but you don't draw a card. So this is like a passive ability that stays with you throughout the game mm -hmm. that will allow you to ignore ghosts or stasis. If you would be teleported, you don't teleport, which can be very oh, useful. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have just the cards that will do stuff for you, uh, like Pizza Sense. The mayor announces how many orthogonally spaces away the closest pizza is to you, and if you already have a pizza, where the house is. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of cards that kind of do that kind of stuff. It tells you a direction, or the mayor will tell you a direction, the game master. And you'll be able to kind of pinpoint the, the location for where your pizza is, and then if you already have the pizza, where the house is, in addition to just cards that let you move and cards that give you some type of an ability, which is super cool. And I thought the cards were done really, really well. Um, you can also make up your own game if you want. You can, there's rules to how you can create your own delivering of the pizzas game mode. There are unique different cards for the number of players with advanced modes to make things more complicated. And there are also little variants to the game that will give you either additional information or make it just that much more challenging. Um, I feel like we played the game and even though somebody won, everybody else wanted to continue playing just to try and see if they could get to their location and how long it would take, which I thought was kind of cool about the game. Um, what's, what's something else? Quality of the game now. What do you, what do you think? Um, I actually really like the tokens and the, the ghosts. Those are super cute. Um, yeah, the quality is good. I don't know how I feel about the, like, the art. <laughs> the... Well, text, that's art anyway, you know? but we're talking about just the quality of the game. I mean, the boards here are excellent. They're easy yeah. to write on. They're easy to erase. You probably don't want to leave the marker on too long. It'll probably stain or it will probably be hard to take off. The meeples are really cute. The little characters, they look like little pizza deliverers with the little hats on the turn to the side, kind of like a 90s pizza deliverer. <laughs> all the tokens work pretty well, thick enough, and all the little pizzas and houses are cute. And the ghosts are, of course, my favorite as well. And they yeah. even provided unique different types of little ghosts with little faces, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, the cards are nice, easy, th thick, and sturdy, and so is the box itself. It's actually really nice and thick, especially because you're going to be using it. And yeah, it's really I like easy. That you actually use the box. I yep. think that's pretty cool. And I, I like too that you're going to have all the information you're going to need as a game master, like literally written down. Ooh, I'm trying not to explode this thing. Uh, on the side of the box here so you can see what they do and then you know what to do next as to what you have to tell them um, and then there's a little sheet of paper that gives you information about what happens boo you ran into a ghost or oink your space oinked and uh it's cute it works really well for kids and i, I think just overall the quality of the game is excellent okay art art <laughs> this is made for little kids in mind um this is like yeah it's definitely like computer design style artwork it didn't do it for me the art didn't do it for me. Uh, the graphic design is just kind of like the weird font choices and stuff like that. It was yeah. hard to read the title. Yeah. The, the fact that the title is so long to Psychic Pizza Deliverers Go to the Ghost Town is just, why not just Psychic Pizza Deliverers or Psychic Pizza? I don't know. There's just like, I just felt like they could have made it a little more poignant, a little more straightforward. Pizza as a, as Delivery. Goes. Yeah. 
Well, it has to be more than pizza delivery because you got ghosts in yeah. it and like cards that help you. Like I, I get the idea of the, 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 the name, but it's just a little bit of a word salad to me. Um, yeah. And I wasn't sure what to expect with this game uh, because uh, this is like made by BoardGameTables.com. They make really great board game tables. I've seen a lot of their stuff. I almost wanted to order one of their tables actually, um, but I'm broke, so I had to get something on Craigslist. But uh, <laughs> uh, they started making some board games. I'm like, hey, you want to check out our games? I'm like, oh, sure, cool. I'll pick those those guys there. It has a cool Halloween theme, so I'm interested in anything that's related to Halloween. And I'm not a huge fan of the art, but that's probably the only thing I don't like about it. Yeah. I know, me too, um, because other than that, the theme is really awesome. I think, like, even without the title, you can tell what the game is going to be based on, like, the rest of the box. Yeah. I'm even almost okay with the art, because it's. I know it's for kids, I know it's for younger, adult, younger audiences, and for families to play with their kids, yeah. but just the title and the font choices were just <laughs> really weird to me. I just didn't really get, personally. Um... <laughs> I think that's pretty much everything negative I have to say. I really like the choices when it came to like showing you what to draw on your board, yeah, but you have that, that option. Was really helpful. I like the customization of being able to make your own little ghost town where the pizza yeah. livers can go, so you can kind of change it up as the DM instead of just picking some of the more generic ones. I liked all the cards, I liked all the pieces, and it felt like a complex, intricate game that actually required a lot of thought and mm -hmm. uh, putting down your pieces where they need to go and figuring out, okay, have I been here before? And, or just moving and you don't have to think about it. Just go, okay, I'm just gonna move over here and maybe you get lucky. And so it can work for the younger audiences as well as the older audiences. But yeah, this game was like, I was like hitting the ball and seeing it go into the home run, but it just kind of hit the, the wall and made a, it made a triple play instead. It made, a, made, a, made, made you go to th third base instead of the home run, <laughs> just because of the, the, the graphic design choices and some of the art. But I, I, sh I would suggest that, that, that not deter you, especially if you have little kids or if you have a family game night, or if you just like playing those kind of minesweeper style, like hidden movement games with a DM. It is a lot of fun. This is a game I'm going to keep. I'm, a game, I'm going to use this game, I'm going to play this with my younger cousins, I'm going to play this with my uh, teenage cousins. Uh, grandma and grandpa will jump in and play this game as well and they'll understand it. So overall, yes, it's a solid game. I do really recommend this game. Yes. <laughs> you enjoyed it? So uh, yeah. is that pretty much, have I summed it up? Pretty much, yeah. It feels mostly just like a really relaxing hidden movement game. Because I feel like sometimes hidden movement games can Stressful. be overwhelming and stressful yeah but this one was a lot more relaxing and fun so if you're interested in picking up the game there's a link down below but let's go ahead and talk about that in the outro uh, but that rhymed that was great <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you're interested in picking up the game psychic pizza deliverers go to the ghost town you can check out the link down below or head over to boardgametables.com or if you want you can even pick up a board game table there they have really nice tables uh, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, where we do blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have a thing every Wednesday and Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, which is a our... Thing. What is it? <laughs> live stream. It's a live stream where we play games just like this one here. And in fact, this would probably make for a really good candidate because we could show not only one of a player's boards, but also show in a separate camera what the Game Master is doing, which is kind of a unique little twist mm -hmm. to how we normally do live streaming. And... Uh, um, you can, oh, the most important thing. If you watched all the way to the end here, you can go ahead and comment uh, down below. Let us know what you think about the game. Like this video and hit that subscribe button and bell notification button. It's, it's, a, it's a great button. It's, <laughs> it's really, um, it's nice. And I think that when you push it, it will bring you joy and happiness for the rest of the day. And if you don't push that button, I'm not saying you're gonna have a bad day, but I'm saying, do you really wanna chance it? Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I look forward to delivering pizza with you next time. Next time. <laughs>funny because we didn't even know that this game was gonna be like minesweeper we just happened to play that right before yeah we had a little conversation about minesweeper like what three hours beforehand yeah. and then afterwards we played this game and i'm like this kind of reminds me of minesweeper yeah it was so random <laughs> <laughs> so and then there's a cat and a dog for some reason
That's a pig. Cat and a pig. Psychic pizza delivers. Go to ghost town. Oh my god. Go to the ghost town. 